Today's the day we're finally going to Mexico. To the border we go. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. I don't know where I need to go. I need my visa. I've never seen the border wall in person. This first day in Mexico seems like the perfect time to take a little sightseeing detour to the famous murals at the ocean. Today is very much an admin day, so I got my SIM card and I need to go grocery shopping. I'm taking these first couple of days really easy and I'm gonna rest, especially after my accident with the bicycle. I just need to, so yeah, I think I'm gonna take a nap today and that's gonna be really special. <laughs> Enjoy this beautiful stand-up paddleboard tour of Bahia Concepcion before I flooded my GoPro. This little mistake, along with a handful of other snafus, changed my trip plans. But that's part of the lessons of the road. Flexibility and adaptability are necessities to living this lifestyle. get out of here. I am not by any means a handyman. I, I won't even pretend. So when I got stuck in the sand, in a windstorm, in the dark, by myself, with one unknown camper on the beach, I got a little freaked out. Luckily, I had the tools to get me out of that situation and into a safe place for the night. Oh, hell no. Okay. <laughs> oh dear god. Ah! <laughs> Where did it go? I've been shining my bright light for about five minutes and the grasshopper has not shown up again. So I think we're okay to go to bed. The desert is such a funny place because it can be so beautiful with all these flowers, but then like at the same time, stabby to death. <laughs> These things are aggressive. Everybody really talked up how scary this was gonna be, you know, that I shouldn't be doing this by myself. I get it, there's bad stuff that happens. I've gotten fear in my brain about being here. So I'm gonna work on letting that go because I don't want other people's fear in my heart and my head. I don't know, morning thoughts. I had a really hard time during my first week in Baja. It was a lonely road with miles and miles of desert between each camp spot. However, arriving to Southern Baja was a completely different experience. 
I fell right into a good group of people, specifically Domi and Sandra from Bicicleando por el Mundo. They started their trip on bicycle in Alaska and rode down through Canada, where they bought their van Frankie and are continuing to South America. This trip is supporting their nonprofit organization, Una Cima, Una Sonrisa, which is a school for children in Africa. They're building classrooms, providing food, and supporting local professors to make education available to kids at the foot of Kilimanjaro. And not only that, but they are some of the best people I've met on the road. If you want to support their project, check the links in the description below. Domi and Sandra are the reason I got to join a trip to snorkel with the Marlins in Bahia Magdalena. Because none of the businesses responded to my inquiries before I arrived, I was under the impression that I could show up and join a trip. However, these trips tend to be organized months in advance, and each boat is a private group. When I first arrived to try to join one, I was turned away. <laughs> marlins are the fastest fish in the ocean. From late October to around early December every year, marlins cruise around Bahia Magdalena for the sardine run. The marlins congregate to go after the bait balls, which are called carnasa in Spanish, and I absolutely love that. Carnasa. Typically, they injure or stun their prey with a flash of their spear-like bill and then circle back to eat. Their spears are impressive and daunting, while their blue stripes shine electric blue as they flash through the water. I'm pretty sure the stripes make them faster. I don't know the science behind it, but it seems logical. Now, I loved getting to see them, and at first it was all so impressive. But then the bait balls got smart. They started using the people in the water as shelter from the hunt, which caused the marlin to get a little frisky. One of our snorkel buddies got a big scare. We ended the trip with some humpback whale watching, and Dami got some incredible views of these massive beauties with his drone. No one is allowed to get in the water with them, but one whale was swimming right by the boat, so we got a good look at her. They are massive and absolutely spectacular, especially when you see them leap completely out of the water. Bahia Magdalena is the same place where the gray whales start showing up in February, so I will definitely be back to learn more about them. I'm not gonna lie, I don't plan on doing a trip like this again. I only learned after the fact that people have been seriously injured and killed by marlins. They are excellent hunters and incredibly accurate, but we humans are like flies disturbing the flow of their hunt. Although they are beautiful, it seems reckless to bring tourists to swim with them, at least in the way that we did it. And apparently my experience was very mild compared to what goes on at peak season. I've been told there can be 30 plus people in the water at one time, which honestly just seems like an accident waiting to happen. Anytime I've been a guide with dangerous creatures or conditions, I've always kept my ratios down. No more than two to four people in the water with a guide at a time. My group was seven in total and it felt chaotic. It was still a fun day out on the water with friends and this is the closest I have ever been to humpback whales. So that was really special. Our next stop was Todos Santos for a lesson in turtle conservation. This is a sleepy town only an hour away from the bustling Cabo San Lucas and is well known for its hippie vibe and great food. There are a few organizations that support the local turtle populations, including the Leatherback, Black Turtle, 
and Olive Ridley. These organizations collect the eggs from nests around the Todos Santos area, incubate them in a safe place away from predators, and then release them into the wild. Ching ching. Ching ching ching. ching, ching. <laughs> It is said that out of every 1,000 turtles released, only two live. Yeah, 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 vamos! Okay. Ay, que emoción! They're so cute! Obviously, besides predators, habitat loss and climate change are huge contributors to the issues that these turtles are facing. That means supporting proactive climate policy and organizations that are doing the important work of helping the environment is insanely important. Over the next few months, I will be sharing about diving around Baja and doing some collaborations with the talented scuba instructors I meet along the way. Subscribe to Tag Along and check out Patreon for extras from me. See you on the road. Did someone tie tie? <laughs>